Okay, so we did our lab on polarization, sort of. We uh, studied how, uh, like, Polaroid cameras and the film develops with different light and therefore different heat. Okay, and then we were going to take a sample picture. So, smile. We're going to take it. I'll go next slide. And so, we have to, like, turn it over with the film so it develops in a dark place or else the chemicals get all messed up. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, we wanted to determine how light and heat affect how a Polaroid picture develops. Yeah. And so our lab was pretty much purely observational. And we were like genuinely interested in this stuff because they're coming back. Yeah. So we used this camera, which I got. And, yeah. And then we had film. And we used research and a hair dryer and light and the sun gun and a shoebox and Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, so the Polaroid camera, or the corporation, was owned by Edwin H. Land in 1937, and then this version of the camera was introduced in 1976 and 77. And then Edwin Land also was the creator of polarization lenses, which are used in sunglasses and stuff. And it works like this, so unpolarized light's going in, and it blocks uh, the electromagnetic light from going through, which causes it to become polarized light. So, yeah, we use color film for part of our experiment and then like CBL film, do the Okay, so in the color film it has like different layers of dye <coughs> and stuff, and so in the negative side it has like three like primary colored layers, which are emulsion layers. It has developing layers underneath, and so if the light hits the emulsion layers, then that color stays, and the developing layers don't emerge, but if it hits like if it doesn't hit it, then the developing colors come through to make different colors. And one thing during our lab is that uh, since it was pretty much purely observational, we had no like previous knowledge on anything about it. Uh, we had to do a lot of research, but a lot of websites were kind of like iffy. Yeah, they were like iffy. It was like, well, it works like this, but we were like, okay, but like, can you go in detail? And then a lot of it, we found one. It was like a lot of chemistry, and so we couldn't really find a lot that had like physics background, so um, we tried to apply as much as we could, but yeah. So here's our procedure, and as Elise sort of demonstrated, uh, you put a piece of film, and usually it's like blue or black, in the camera, and you. what we did is we were in my room, and we put uh, the third Harry Potter book on the floor, and Elise, since it's her camera, she knows how to work it stood like four feet above it and took a picture and we it would come out and we would place it in the desired location. So we're passing around the five trials that we did. And so our first one is normal. So we put it face down under my bed. So it was like in dark. And then we did, I have this like kind of lamp. So we put it face up under the lamp. Then we put face down under the lamp to maybe see if it would kind of make a difference and then we did I took a hair dryer and I blew it on the the one that's red is the hair dryer one and I blew on it for five minutes so we put it under my bed like the normal one and the last one we put in the shoe box uh, just to see if like complete total darkness would have any effect and so we waited for 30 40 minutes and then we would look at the pictures we ended up waiting a little bit longer yeah like overnight yeah it was like overnight um, and during that time we kind of did a lot of research on why heat and light affects it. Okay, so our data were the five pictures we took, and since we didn't, like, we only had the pictures, we didn't have any graphs or, like, error analysis or math analysis, so there was nothing really to make them up. If we, I guess, if we were to do, like, graphs, we would plot, like, the amount of light versus, like, how the pictures turned out, but we didn't really know how to quantify how the pictures turned out, sort of, so we didn't make uh, that, and we didn't see math as like fit. This was more chemistry, as awful as that sounds. Um, it was more chemical and about the chemicals and how the light affects it. Okay, so the error was adjusting the camera. So the camera has like these uh, like distance and light little things, I guess sensors, and we might have adjusted those right. Or the temperatures of the room and under different circumstances, uh, not placing the film in position quick enough so it was exposed to too much light at first. And then the camera is old, so like there could be stuff going on in the camera that we don't really know about. 
and can be hard to determine. And you have to hold it super still, so it could be possible that we like moved it, or at least I'm not saying that, but like it could be like a little bit shaky. Yeah. Um, so that can make it blurry. And so we concluded that heat and light both have an effect on it, but the heat, the effect of heat is a little more obvious than the effect of light. Yeah. And because so, that picture turned red, while the ones placed up in, like under the light didn't get affected as much, but like we have one that we put under the sun gun, which was affected a lot. This was under for like 30 seconds, so we had to turn the sun gun off because it started to like burn and steam. But it was interesting, yeah, because when we looked at the results, as you can see, the ones that were under the lamp kind of, the only reason it's blurry is probably because we were a little shaky, um, but it was interesting because the three, uh, the one under the light, face up and face down, the normal ones all turned out relatively similar with the coloring and everything. The only one that was different was the hair dryer. And so we did conclude that sunlight and heat have an effect on it, like natural light, not like, fluorescent light bulbs um, and we think that it like reacts with the chemicals in a way and I think that the heat like we can pass these around too these were the ones that we took in class um, it was just interesting <coughs> so Elise took a picture of me in a blanket and all three of them and you can't really make them out very well but I'll pass these around too because these are interesting but so yeah, we can conclude that from our data and the research that we were very limited to and that heat and light affect it a lot and um, that it will develop best in normal circumstances, but I don't think it really matters if it's like exposed to light a little bit. Like I feel like the best results are if it's like face down, but this is interesting to see that sunlight and heat do have an effect. So, that's our new yeah. We have time for a question? Yes. Um, could you be able to, like, quantify the intensity of the light versus the intensity of the heat to see how, like, light of equal intensity to the intensity of the heat, like, how different the results would be so you could see how much more effective heat is? We probably could and yeah. like quantify it. We probably should have checked out like a like those light sensor things and we could have just um, taken the temperature. But we sort of didn't really know at the time what was going to happen. We kind of figured so and then, then it was like a little bit too late because in the pack there's only eight pictures and we were like shoot. So uh, we could have done that for sure but we didn't really know what we could have graphed Long yeah, that. yeah, that makes sense. Dean? What color light did you use? Because I know that, at least in some types of photography, you put uh, developing photos in a red lighted room. So did you think about using that at all, or does that have any effect on Polaroid pictures? We didn't, I don't, my opinion is that it doesn't. I think that maybe it could a little bit, because our pictures didn't turn out perfect, as you can kind of see. We just used like a normal like, light bulb. It was like my room was like normally lit, there was like a lamp and a normal light. So I guess it was like lit like this sort of, but it could have done something, but we didn't really have access to that sort of, that room. Mickey? Um, how expensive is Polaroid film? Uh, it's like 24 bucks. For a pack of eight. For like the type for this camera because uh, Polaroid <coughs> stopped making film, and so it's like a special place makes it. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of like rare now, I guess. But I agree. Great, thank you guys.